All right, here's another problem. Jeff is setting up an aquarium and must choose four of six different fish and two of three different plants. How many different combinations of fish and plants can Jeff choose? Okay, so here there are two sets of combinations you have to deal with. One is the combination of these fish that, and that are to be chosen, and the other is the combination of plants, right? Now, as far as fish are concerned, four out of six, right? You want to choose four out of six. So your slots are four, two, three, four. Your total options are six. Okay. So uh, since the first I'll have six, for the first slot I'll have six options. The second one would be five. This again reduces by one since the first the first slot takes up one. And going on forward, I'll have four and three. Cool. Now the next thing I have to realize is, is the order important here? Okay, does it matter which choose I fish, uh, which fish I choose first? Well, uh, that doesn't matter actually here. I just want to have four fish in the end. I don't care which one I pick first, right? Um, so you have to divide by the factorial of total number of slots that you have made. Okay, so if I do the math here, I have six times five times four times three. I divide that by Four factorial, which is four times three times two times one. Four and four cancels, three and three cancels, two times one, two times three is six, three times five, fifteen. So total fifteen combinations for fish. Okay. Let's do it for plants. Now for plants, I want to choose two out of three, so I have two slots, three total options. So the first will have three, this other one would have two. Again here, the order is not important, so I'll have to divide by the factorial of uh, number of slots available. Okay, that's one, two cancels to two. I have three combinations possible for choosing plants. Okay, so now I want to find the total combinations possible for selecting these fish and plants, right? Uh, so here, I guess, you can see kind of intuitively that if you have 15 combinations of one thing, three combinations of another thing, to get your total combinations of these things, you basically multiply these two quantities, so 15 times 3, and that gives you 45. Um, if you can't kind of grasp this intuitively, you can see that okay, if, if you take your first fish option, okay, then you have on your plant side, you have three other options available, right? Since the total combination of plants are three. So now for each fish option, I have three options on the plant side, right? So, so since there are 15 fish options, three plant options for each of those options, you, the part of this gives you the total combinations possible. Okay. Cool. All right, let's do another problem. So, of the 900 freshmen at Georgia Tech, 250 are taking pre-calculus and 300 are taking chemistry. If 75 freshmen are taking both pre-calculus and chemistry, how many freshmen are taking neither of these classes? So, this is a classic GRE problem. You'll see terms of these types on GRE as well as on other standard exams. And there's a very standard way to do these problems. Um, one thing to avoid is to basically say, okay, you have 900 total students. I'm going to subtract out the pcalc one. I'm going to subtract out the 300, and I'm going to do something with the 75 that are taking both. Maybe I subtract those all out too, and I get the ones who are taking either. Right? Well, uh, this would be guesstimate, and it's better to do this more systematically. To do this systematically, what you need is a Venn diagram. So Venn diagram is a graphical way to represent uh, groups. Okay, so here my this rectangular is basically encloses all the members of all the groups that I have here. So here the total members I have is the freshman class size, which is fine. Okay, now within this diagram I can have circles representing particular group. So I can have a circle for chemistry, I'll show it by C, and the problem tells me there are 250 of these. Then there is a circle that represents pre-calculus, okay, sorry, the chemistry ones are 300. Okay. 
Then there's a circle representing free calculus, and the problem tells me there are 250 of these. Now the thing is there is overlap between the chemistry and free calculus group, and there are 75 students who are in this overlap region. So I'll draw the circle for pre -cal so that I have the smaller region that overlaps both circles, right? I could have drawn the circle without the overlaps, but since I know there are students taking both the classes, I have to have this overlap. So for pre-calculus, which I'll shorthand here with PC, I, the problem tells me there are 250 students in total taking pre -cal. All right. Now, everyone outside the outside these two circles are other members of the 900 freshman class who are taking neither of these classes, right? And this is the quantity that we need to find. Okay. So, the trick here is to effectively tackle the overlapping region, which is taking, which is taking both the classes. And we know this is 75 freshmen who are taking both calculus and pre-calculus. Chemistry and pre-cal, sorry. Okay, so what I can calculate is students who are taking chemistry only. And I know this would be 300 minus the overlapping students, which are 75, that gives me 235. I can calculate students who are taking pre-calculus, and that would be 250 minus 75, that's 175, okay? So when I'm calculating my neither group, I know I have 900 in all. I take out the ones who are taking calculus, 225. The ones, oh, sorry, that's the chemistry group. The ones who are taking pre-calculus, that's 175. And then I take out the group that's taking both, right? Because I have subtracted uh, that group from my chemistry as well as my Calc group, right? So I have to take into account that group when I'm calculating those two number of students who are taking neither of these classes, right? So if I do the subtraction, I get 425 students, right? So again, the trick here is this Venn diagram, which is pretty simple in theory, and to effectively tackle your overlapping group. Okay, once you get good at it, you can do a lot of these things in your head, uh, but to start off, it's good to have this picture of what a Venn diagram looks like. Okay. I hope this helps and practice a lot using either you can use parents or some any other book um, that you know doesn't market capital comes to you. Good luck.